Hello everyone, welcome back to another Python video. This time we're starting with Python Unit 2. Um, and the purpose and goal of Python Unit 2 is to become more comfortable with NumPy. So we've already introduced NumPy in a previous video and talked about how to get it installed on your computer. So if you need help with that, I'll leave those videos linked in the cards above. Otherwise, in this video, we're going to focus on what's called regular arrays. And what we mean by that is just making NumPy arrays that follow a certain pattern. So I have a number of examples here that we'll go through. And the first one is we're looking at this array of all zeros that has length 13. And I know I've kind of written it with the list brackets here, um, but I do mean a NumPy array. Um, so let's kind of talk about how we could do something like that. So before we even try doing anything in NumPy, we should import it. So as a reminder, we do import NumPy as NP. And remember, this NP is standard notation, so you should absolutely use it. Then I'll run the code and NumPy is installed on this computer, so there's no error. If you get an error in this step, um, either reach out to me or your TA, or you can um, watch our video on how to get started with NumPy. Otherwise, we have NumPy imported. And let's now think about how we could make this length 13 array of all zeros. Um, so what you'll see is that, uh, like we've mentioned before, there's many similarities to, to MATLAB. So you might guess something like np.zeros, and that would be exactly correct. So we could do np.zeros of 13. And we can see here, this gives me an array with 13 zeros. And this array in front is telling me this is not a list, like I kind of have written here. It is a NumPy array. So we could even do, let's do type np.zeros of 13. And we can see this is NumPy nd array that stands for n dimensional array. So I've shown you how to make kind of this NumPy array of all zeros, maybe as a preview of what's coming up a little later. Um, I could do something like 0, 4. Now I'm going to put a dummy variable, so I'm going to use an underscore in range 11. So this is called list comprehension, and we'll spend a lot more time with it um, in an upcoming unit. But just as a preview, what this is doing is it's saying build a list where I'm going to put 0 in the list for this dummy variable underscore going through range 11. So what does this give us? It gives us a list with 11 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 11. So that's one way we could get something similar. Another thing we could do that's kind of cool is I could do 0 plus 0. And you'll notice that gives me a list with two elements, so 0, comma 0. So using this idea, I could do something like 0 times. And then if I did 10, for instance, this gives me a list with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 zeros. I could do it with 13 to get 13 zeros and so on. So like I said, um, I showed you one example where we get a NumPy array um, and a couple other examples with lists just as a preview of what's to come. Um, so that's our first example. The next example now is how could we make a 3 by 5 matrix containing all 7s? So again, let's go back to np.zeros. And we might be tempted to type something like 3 comma 5, but there's a subtle mistake here and a common mistake. So let's run it and see what happens. So it's saying here it cannot interpret 5 as a data type. So let's kind of call help on np.zeros and see what's going on. So let's see. So it's telling us here that the argument, the first one should be shape. And we go here to shape and we see it's either an integer or a tuple of integers. And this is going to be the shape of the new array. So 2 comma 3 would give us a 2 by 3 versus just 2. So think of that example we just did up here with np.zeros of 13. We get just length 13. So instead of having np.zeros of 3 comma 5 like this, we just need to put it in a tuple. So I'll say np.zeros of 3 comma 5. And we can see here this gives me a 3 by 5 numpy array that's populated entirely with zeros. Now, the original question, if we go back, asks us to populate it with all sevens. So to go from zero to seven, I could do plus seven. And we can see now I've gotten a three by five NumPy array that's populated entirely with sevens. Now, uh, kind of when I do plus seven here, it might seem a little bit magical how we're able, 
for how NumPy is able to know to put the 7 in every single space. Um, this is an example of what's called broadcasting, and this will be the topic of a future video. Um, but when you eventually you do start learning about broadcasting, think back to these examples and realize that you've been using it all along. Um, we'll just extend it to some more general situations. Um, so here was one way that we were able to get this 3 by 5 array with all 7s. Maybe we wanted integers instead. So here we have the decimals. What if I wanted to get rid of them? And we can notice, if we go back to the documentation, we can see the second argument is the data type. And by default, it's a float, but we can specify it to be an integer if we'd like. So I could come back here and say d type equals float. Oops, float is the default. What did I mean to say? I meant to say integer. And now we can say we get integer sevens instead of float sevens. Um, if you think back to MATLAB, you might remember ones as well. So we could do np.ones of 3 comma 5. And again, let's say we want integers. So this gives me a 3 by 5 array with all ones. Um, now let's say, how do I get to 7 from here? Well, I could multiply by 7. So again, this is another example of something called broadcasting where I'm able to kind of stretch this 7 and see how to populate the rest of the array with it. So let's see, what's next on the list? Well, I guess I should scroll down. Next, again, something that should make you think of our MATLAB unit. I want to create a list going from 0 to 200, or perhaps an NumPy array. It's written as a list here. Length 5, evenly distributed. So the command we used in MATLAB was linspace, and it will be linspace here as well. So I do np, or maybe even let's do help, np.linspace. And we can see what we do is we tell it where to start, where to stop, and something here with numbers, so it's saying the default is 50, but it's saying returns number, evenly spaced samples, calculated over closed interval start to stop, so it's including the endpoint by default. So let's try it out. So we want to go 0 to 200, so np.linspace, 0, 200, and we want 5 evenly spaced points. So we can see here we have 0, 50, 100, 150, 200. So just another example of something very similar to MATLAB. Let's look at the next example. So now we want to create a 5 by 5 matrix where the first row is all zeros, second row is all ones, third row is all twos, and so on. So maybe the first thing that we want to do is let's start by just creating uh, an array that's 5 by 5, so it has the correct shape and all zeros, and then we'll figure out how to put in the numbers that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call ARR for array. Let's call this, or let's do np.zeros. And if I put 3 comma 5, what would be the mistake? So the mistake would be that the dimensions are not in a tuple. So I'm going to have 3 by 5. And notice I can't see ARR here. So if I wanted to look at it, I could call it in a new uh, cell. So here's our array. It's a 3 by 5 array of all zeros. I do want integers, so let's specify that the dtype is integers. And now let's think about it. So I want, oops, and I've made it 3 by 5 instead of 5 by 5. So I was thinking of our previous examples. So now it's 5 by 5. We have a nice square matrix. And I want to take the first row and assign it to 0, second row, assign it to 1, so on and so forth. So Maybe as a reminder, if I call ARR, let's say 0, what this does is it returns, well, it's the first row if I'm kind of like counting and describing normally, but kind of index-wise we're starting at 0, so it returns the 0th row. If I call ARR of 1, that returns the first row. And kind of using this idea, what we can do is we want to iterate through the number of rows. So I can say, let's say, for i in range 5 for the 5 rows, I'm going to take the i row and I'm going to set it equal to i. So now let's take a look. And we can see here that did exactly what we want. So we have an array where we have all zeros, then all ones, all twos, all the way up until we get all fours. So let's do one more kind of similar example, but now we want to do it with a 2 by 5 matrix. So again, let's start by creating kind of our blank array of the same shape. So let's call this np.zeros 
or we'll call it ARR, it's going to be NP dot zeros of 2 comma 5. We can take a look at it, there it is, and let's make it integers. And now uh, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. So we'll have method one, let's call it that. So method one. And let's see. So maybe what I want to do. Oops. All right. So kind of what we might notice just looking at this two by five matrix is we start at two go up by three, go up by three, go up by three, go up by three. So the first thing we might try doing is we would say, okay, for I in range two, for the two rows, then this is good practice for our nested for loops. For J in range five, so again, number of columns, one, two, three, four, five. What do we want to do? We want to take the I, J position and say, well, we started with two, and we want to add a multiple of three. So when j is zero, we add nothing and get two. When j is one, we do two plus three, we get five. So let's see if this works. Like I said, there's gonna be a small mistake. Maybe you can spot it before we run ARR. So notice here, what's gone wrong is the variable i is not actually used anywhere in our assignment. So kind of everything that's being assigned to these uh, entries in our array depends only on J, depends only on the column. So kind of the way that we can fix this is by noticing when I'm in the first row, well, I do 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, but then the second row, I can think of it as, well, what's the difference between 2 and 17? That's 15. So kind of I start at 15 plus two, and then add three, and then add three, and then add three. So all of this to say is one way that we can fix this is as follows. So I'm just gonna copy paste. So we still have two plus three times J, but now plus 15 times the column that we're in, or sorry, the row that we're in, because remember I is indexing the rows. So now let's take a look, and we can see here, this gives us exactly the array that we were expecting. So this works and this is fine, um, but maybe we could make it a little bit nicer for somebody to read. Um, so perhaps if I had just shown you this piece of code, maybe it's not entirely clear what we want to do. So here's a slightly more elegant way of setting this up, um, just for readability and to make sure that somebody else reading your code is able to understand it. So we're talking about kind of columns versus rows. So let's say we know our number of columns is equal to five. So I'm gonna call a variable calls five. And we know the steps between each element of our array is three. So our step size is three. Then what I'm going to do is say my array is NP dot zeros. And I want it to be two comma columns. So this should be again two by five array of all zeros so far. Then what we can do is we can say for I in range two, for j in range columns, then the ij position of our array is equal to 2 plus the step size, which is 3 times j, plus now we know we have the columns times i. So let's take a look at our array. And we can see here, oops, something went wrong. Uh, what am I, does anybody see what I'm missing here? So it's not columns times I, remember columns was five. It's five times our step size of three. So it should be columns times step times I. And we can see here, this gives us exactly what we wanted. And maybe I also had forgotten to put integer here. So we can say integer. And there, that gives us what we expect. Uh, this was, like I said, method one. So let's try one more method. So I will call this method two. So it's a little bit faster. We could do np.arange. I want to start at two. 
don't go past 30. So go up to, but don't include 30. Step size of how much? We want three. So if I do this, I get the numbers that I want. So two, five, eight, up to 29. But now it's not in the correct shape. So what I can do is say dot reshape. And I want this to be in a two by five array. So that gives me exactly what I want. I think this is a good place to end this video. In the next video, we're going to start talking about random numbers in NumPy. Um, so thank you for watching, and I will see you there.